Hey guys, so you want to invest and explore trading but you do not have an idea where to start or how to start your journey? Then the video is for you! Here we go! So pag tinanong ko kayo, saan nyo linalagay ang mga savings nyo? Most of us might say on the bank, which what we are taught ever since, di ba? But what if I tell you na ang pera natin sa bangko ay kumikita lamang ng 0.25% per annum? So basically, hindi nga natin masabi na kita yun, di ba? Why? Due to inflation. As I'm talking right now, Philippine inflation is 2.9%, roughly 3%. So, for us to say na yung pera natin ay nag-break even man lang or nag-grow is dapat above siya sa inflation rate. So, what if I tell you there are various and many ways for us to keep and grow our money at the same time? Disclaimer, I'm not actually telling you to ditch your bank at all. What I'm actually saying is for you to keep your emergency funds on the bank. So, emergency funds are funds that can cover at least 3 months of your monthly expenses. It must be kept liquid as much as possible. Why? Because if we have an unexpected emergency, unexpected na gastos, is we can expect na pumul out tayo sa ating portfolio na investment. Because most of the investment ngayon is merong holding period or maturity. Pag kumuha tayo doon, is definitely magkakaroon tayo ng penalty or unnecessary ng mga fees. Sa trading naman, kapag pull out ka ng pull out ng pera mo at ginawa mo siyang ATM, definitely makawalan ka ng buying power and, and buying power is the most important thing. So, what I'm actually saying is that before you even try to invest at all, is you must first establish your emergency fund first. So, ano nga ba ang mga forms of investment na pwede nating maging options? Let's divide it into two. One is passive investment. Two is active investment. So, sa passive investments, let's define it something na meron kang buy and hold mentality. Something na pwede rin na meron siyang fixed na income na rate sa fixed na payout na frequency. Or, some, or meron naman tayong someone na nagko-control or nagmamanage ng ating portfolio. And then, hintay na lang natin mag-mature yung ating binigay na pera. So, sa active investment naman, as we all know, is trading. So, in here, you have full control on it. So, you can tell or you can decide which to buy, how much to buy, when to sell, and what to sell. So, given that you have full freedom on, on your account. Dapat, syempre, Given that you have full control on your account, you must know what you are doing. So, punta na tayo under the passive investment. Una sa listahan natin, which is the bond, di ba? So, sa bond, is meron siyang general characteristic na fixed income on a fixed interval basis. Also, note natin, this is a liquid asset. Once you buy this, you can transfer the ownership to another person. So, in layman's term, is ikaw nagpapautang dito sa isang entity and that entity may be corporate or government entity. So, ang unique dito is you have a single entity na mungutang sa multiple na tao. At the same time, ang unique dito is that single entity, siya yung nagde-demand nung rate nung ibabayad niya sa'yo, which is unlikely. Dito. Ang usual way is yung nagpapautang magsasabi kung magkano yung babayad mo sa akin. So, ano yung risk pagdating sa bond? So, ang bonds is generally categorized as a low risk investment. Kasi, for example, you bought a corporate bond. Para malugi ka doon is dapat yung corporate na yun is mag-file ng bankruptcy. So, in a government bond, that is highly unlikely to happen because you're betting against the economy. So, I will show you how easy it is na mag-avail ng isang bond. Right now, I'll give you an example. I'll give you a link below. So, in this example, we have the Vista Land Peso Corporate Bond. So, let's inspect its main features. So, it has a 5.5 years of tenure. It has a 5.7% rate per annum. Also, it has a minimum investment of 50,000 with increment of 10,000 pesos. This is still offered until March 18, 2020. So versus our inflation rate, which is currently 2.9%, definitely this is not a bad deal versus if we 
keep our money on the bank. So, so punta na tayo sa ating second disc under passive investment. This is mutual funds and unit investment trust funds. So basically, they are almost the same. So they are basket of investment, various investment. Kung saan merong isang authority na bahala mag-manage or mag-allocate ng funds na yun, depende dun sa risk appetite mo. So yung risk appetite na yun is pwede siyang isang entity lang siya huli. So kunyari, pwede siyang pool na equity, pwede siyang pool na forex, or pwede lahat siyang fixed income such as funds, or any rates, or money market. So depende dun sa pinili mong classic of forms of mutual funds or UITF. So, ang key difference between UITF and mutual fund is kung sino nagmamanage at kung sino nagre-retain nito. So, ang UITF is managed and retained by a bank. So, yung accessibility niya sa atin, ng mga citizen is very easy. So, using our online banking is napakadali niya mag-avail. Depende kung anong napili natin form of, of UITF. Doon naman sa mutual fund, it is a separate financial company kung saan siya yung bahala mag-manage nun at the same time siya na yung bahala mag-allocate nun. Key difference nung mutual fund ay eh, mutual funds naman is mas more transparent sila kasi regular sila nagpapadala ng mga reports depending dun sa performance nung nabili mong mutual funds. So maganda siya, di ba? Compared dun sa UITF is madalas hindi sila transparent compared sa mutual funds. So, ano ba yung magandang i-point out sa mutual funds and UITF? Ang Return of investment mo dito is variable. Depende dun sa performance nung napili mong mutual funds or UITF. So, basically, kailangan mo alamin or aralin kung paano mag-evaluate ng appropriate na forms of UITF or mutual funds na para sa'yo. Kunyari, ngayon, is hindi ka dapat pipili ng mga uh, equity market kasi down si PSEI. So, kung titingin ka ng mga performance ng year-to-date ngayon or pati yung last year na performance ng mga equity market natin under mutual funds or UITF, almost all of them are red. So, nalubi ka pa, diba? So, ito yung pinapoint out ko sa'yo. So, you must learn which to buy and anong appropriate na para sa'yo. So, currently, ang maganda nga yung bill is yung under any forms of funds. Lalo na nga ngayon, yung maganda yung under government funds. Ayun, I'll create a separate videos regarding on how to evaluate and how to read yung mga parameters ng mga each mutual funds na yan, kung ano yung mga key component na kailangan mong tutun, tutukan pag pipili ka ng appropriate na mutual funds or UITF para sa'yo. So, stay tuned on my next video regarding mutual funds and UITF. So, punta na tayo sa aking favorite part which is active investment. This is also known as trading. So, trading is just means na nag-exchange ka ng value for something. So, that something may be equity, It may be forex, it may be commodity, or even it may be cryptocurrency. So, punta muna tayo sa stock market or equity. So, stock market is just means when you buy a stock, it means you buy a piece of ownership of that public company. So, given that you are part of an owner of that company, you will be having a rights on that, a voting rights. Also, meron ka rin right para mag-claim ng dividend kapag nag Uh, nag-public sila ng nag-announce ng cash dividend or stock dividend. So basically, paano ka ba kumita sa stock market? So, you can earn in stock market when you buy lower and you sell higher. That is the common practice on stock market. So that is also known as stock appreciation. But what if I tell you na sa stock market, pwede ka rin gantong strategy. You buy high and you sell higher. So isa yun sa mga strategy na kaya natin i-employ given that na nagmamonitor ka ng stock market actively. Punta naman tayo sa forex market. So sa forex market, ang trinitrade mo dito is national currency. So for example, pupunta ako ng US is ang obviously magpapapalit ako ng US dollars, di ba? So ang, ang ibig sabihin nun is binenta ko yung aking Philippine currency para makapag-obtain ako ng dollar na currency. So, ang nangyari, for example, pumunta ako ng US at wala akong nagastos. Pagkabalik ko dito, para kumita yung pera ko, pag kinonvert ko siya sa peso, is kailangan yung ekonomiya ng US ay lumaki versus dun sa ekonomiya ng Pilipinas. So, I'm betting against the Philippines versus I'm betting na umakyat yung ekonomi ng, ng US. So, para kumita ako dun. So, ganun ang forex na trading. So, meron tayong four major currency pairs dun. 
Ang one thing to take note sa Forex is walang pahinga. This is traded 24 hours. So basically, sa buong 24 hours na yun, pwede kang mag-buy and sell ng currency mo using the broker that you have. So punta naman tayo sa cryptocurrency. So yung cryptocurrency, lately lang yun nag-boom, di ba? So cryptocurrency is more likely like a Forex. So para, kasi equivalent ng, ng cryptocurrency, it's just like a digital money. So, ibig sabihin lang ng digital money, it's not tied to any economy ng isang bansa. It is a peer-to-peer -peer money na equivalent kung saan yung mismong tao yung nagbigay ng value nung, nung isang currency na yun, dun sa isang digital currency na yun. Which is ang pinakasikat ngayon, which is dati pa, di ba yung Bitcoin, followed by Ethereum, followed by XRP, followed by Litecoin, etc. etc. So, basic principle ng Forex is just applicable to to cryptocurrency. So, pwede nating masabi na ang forex, ang cryptocurrency, and even commodity trading falls under zero-sum game. What does that mean? So, for example, nag ako ng gantong amount of money. Hindi natin alam saan mo nakuha yung equivalent ng money na yun, di ba? Ibig sabihin, merong gantong same equivalent na tao na nawalan ng gantong pera kasi ikaw nakagain ng pera na yun. So, that is basically zero-sum game. Bakit? Kasi dito sa Forex or dito sa cryptocurrency or even commodity, meron short na tinatawag. Pero, di ba, yung usual na alam natin para kumita, we buy low, we sell higher. Meaning nun, we are betting na yung price, eh, tumaas para kumita tayo. That is the usual way of thinking. But what if I tell you na pwede ka rin kumita na bumet ka against that price? So, you're betting na bumaba yung presyo na yun. For example, di ba nga, na, ex na example ko kanina sa Forex, is you are selling and buying at the same time. Yun yung ibig sabihin nun. It means, if pag nag-short ka, you're betting against that major currency pair. Pag nag-short ka dun, merong equivalent na tao na naglulong nun or want na mag-price appreciation. So, maglalaban yun. Kung sinong manalo, siya yung makakuha ng gain ng pera na yun. That is the major concept of cryptocurrency and forex. So, punta na tayo sa ating last form of tradable na asset. So, ito yung commodity. So, commodity trading is like parang stock na stock market or equity market lang na tradable. Pero instead na company shares ang binibilin mo, bumibili ka ng asset equivalent of that something. That something may be silver, that may be gold, that may be oil, that may be nickel, etc. etc. So, for you to gain is that is usually buy low, you sell higher, that is appreciation, price appreciation, diba? So, but you can also short that thing. So, marami mga international na broker na pwede mong magamit dito such as eToro, etc, etc. I know it looks intimidating at first, but do not worry, I will create a lot of videos step by step regarding specifically on trading on equity, on cryptocurrency, and even evaluation of mutual funds and UTF. UITF. Then you will know the essential tools needed in trading, how to read a charts, the position sizing, there is management and even my proven strategies. I will share them all. So see you soon on my next video.